Hello everybody, welcome to Also Rusty Bucket. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I am trying to hit 100K on this channel by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate that subscription. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. So, I did not do a series preview video on the main channel for Hawks versus Bucks because I just had other shit going on and I was not able to make that video in the time necessary because of course I have to release it before the actual series happens. Learned my lesson with that one on uh, on Lakers versus Suns because I released it like right as game one was happening. Tanked as a result. So I would have to have uh, put a bunch of other stuff off to the side in order to make that happen. So that's why you did not get that video. I wanted to make it, but it just didn't happen. So if I'm going to actually give a prediction for this series, or at least what I would have before this game, uh, I would have said the Bucks win in five, possibly six, because... Uh, the Hawks have continued to surprise me, so I'm going to give them a little bit more of an edge than I would have initially, because if you would have told me a few months ago Hawks versus Bucks in a conference finals, I would have said, first of all, what? And then I would have said Bucks and four. But five, probably even six, honestly, would be my prediction. I'd probably say six based on how this Hawks team has played. Uh, that would be my prediction. However, game one did not go well for the Bucks. Now, I will say, to give credit to the Bucks and to not overreact... And the title of this video is going to be very, like, overreacting in comparison to what my actual reaction is. It really didn't feel like they tried in this game. And Trey Young had, what What did he end up having? Was it like 49? I know he had over 40 for sure. He had 48. 48 and 11. Uh, pretty relatively good efficiency. He wasn't as good in the second half as he was the first half. But, uh, yeah, he... He was just unstoppable in this game. But the thing is, part of the reason why he had such a damn good game is that the Bucks' defensive strategy against him was terrible. They were either going under screens for him to get threes, which he started off this game hitting some pretty absurd threes. He had one that was so disrespectful. I think it was Drew Holiday who was guarding him. He did a crossover, and then Drew started to like predict where he was going, and then there was a screen, and then suddenly Trey was like, 10 feet from Drew Holiday, and at that point, there was so much space that no one was going to bother trying to run out to contest him. So Trey was like, fuck it, I will sit open for two seconds, do a little shimmy, and then shoot the three. It's like, that's the most disrespectful thing I've ever fucking seen. He also threw a lob off of the backboard to John Collins, which is like, bro, the balls to attempt something like that in a conference finals where you are not favored. Unbelievable from Trey Young this game. Um, but if I'm going to be charitable to the Bucks, not that they deserve it, but if I'm going to be chari charitable to the Bucks, Trey had an unbelievable performance that regardless of how poorly you defended him, he wouldn't typically have. And you also weren't trying that hard. The thing is, though, you know, maybe try hard, possibly. You want to think about it, maybe? Uh, so late this game, there was no Brooke Lopez. In fact, Brooke only played 20 minutes in this game because... He was getting killed by Trey Young. Now, I actually expected us to see Brooke Lopez get benched in the net series. However, when it became pretty much just Kevin Durant, who was a threat, Brooke was not as exploitable as he was. However, Trey is maybe the most anti-drop coverage big player in the league, even if Kevin Durant is also great in that situation. He's not as much of a pick-and-roll heavy player as Trey, not even close, really. Uh, maybe if it was James Harden in that situation and we just seen a different different story but regardless trey is very much on ball all the time always creating off of the dribble always in pick and rolls the hawks run a lot of fucking pick and rolls with capella and john collins but really specifically capella in this game because it meant that brooke lopez was constantly in drop coverage where he just got burned on so many floaters and if it wasn't a floater there was his the trey's defender was trying to recover for the floater so we ended up giving him space for three it was just a whole mess with the bucks defensive scheme um so for that reason trey was able to just feast he hit some deep threes and he hit some tough shots he had one and one where he was just falling down floater from like 15 feet with, with after drew holiday bumped into him things like that uh, but yeah, they just didn't defend Trey Young well. And, you know, t 
to be fair, it's not easy to defend the guy. Like, both worrying about his playmaking, especially when a pick-and-roll situation, like with a lob to Capella or John Collins. You have to worry about that, but you also can't give him the floater. He's a very hard-to-guard pick-and-roll player. However, uh, Brooke Lopez is not the man for that assignment. What we saw happen late this game, and to give 5% credit to Mike Budenholzer, at least he realized this late, even though he probably should have realized it from the fucking start of the game... He put Giannis in his center, and Pat Connaughton in a shooting guard, Chris Middleton at small forward, P.J. Tucker at power forward, obviously Drew Holiday at point. So, they eventually went to their small ball lineup, where it's not even really small because Giannis is still a 6'11 center, uh, but he went to that, they went to that lineup, and they defended better under those circumstances, especially Trey Young, who was not as good in the second half. He went more towards getting fouled rather than actually scoring, because I believe he only had like one free throw in the first half. Uh, and finished with 12. So a little bit more leaning into getting fouls, ironically leaning into getting fouls. But uh, regardless, it still wasn't enough at that point because the Hawks, there was a shift in the third quarter where it felt like the Bucks, like late in the fourth, third quarter, where it felt like the Bucks were starting to get the momentum back in their favor. Giannis got a really big block on Bogdanovich. There were a couple of alley-oops. Uh, specifically to Giannis. So th- that momentum started shifting more their way, but really... Atlanta was it was pretty much even at that point and the things just really went Atlanta's ways uh, late game Pat Connaughton missed the three uh, airballed a three uh, Chris Middleton missed a open three to tie the game to send into OT which he really should have made uh, and Giannis got fouled under the basket because Bryn Forbes couldn't didn't realize he was rolling so he passed it to Drew who at that point threw the pass too late um, so yeah not the best execution from the Bucks, and not good defense on Trey Young. Speaking on the Bucks' offense, which I just mentioned a bit there, uh, Giannis did plenty fine in this one, and Drew Holiday stepped up in the void of a terrible Chris Middleton. We haven't seen terrible Chris Middleton since the start of the Nets series, but he's back for today because 15-5-4 on 26% from the field, 0-9 for 9 from outside. Not a pretty game. For Chris Middleton. Um, Outside of that, I have to give credit to P.J. Tucker. How many offensive rebounds did he have? He had three. Felt like he had ten. So credit to him for that. And then Bobby Portis was really good off of the bench. My guy Nicholas, uh, who's a partial Bucks fan, was bitching about Bobby Portis not getting minutes later in the net series. And I agree because Bobby Portis is both a pretty good offensive player. And then when he gets locked in and he puts the energy into it, he can be pretty good defensively. And he's been doing that in the playoffs. So really feel like he should be a bigger part of the rotation. Uh, But has not been the case. But speaking of the rotation, Jeff Teague played almost six minutes. Come on, dude. Like we don't we don't need to do this. Like it's 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 just stupid. We don't need to do this. Anyways, uh, on the Hawks side of things, outside of that, I mean, offensively, Giannis is getting to the paint just fine. And I will say, uh, less once as time progresses in the playoffs, we're seeing less and less of Giannis just creating on the perimeter. Now, I will say, he actually, did a pretty fucking good job of that in this game. Um, drives to the basket, things like that. Uh, there are multiple times where he had contact and Capella was right there, but he still finished anyways because he's Giannis. And it wasn't uh, like like Clint Capella was specifically the matchup for a majority of the game, or at least the guy who ended up contesting with the basket the most. And I'd say uh, Giannis handled that fine. Uh, didn't take an excessive amount of jump shots. I don't even know if he took a mid-range shot. I know he took two threes, but that's pretty much it from him jump shot-wise. I think he took, it a, he took a fadeaway on Trey Young, which people were, like, complaining about. But also, Clint Capella was right there for the help defense, so I wasn't mad at him about that. And like I said, Drew Holiday stepped up. He was great. And I, I almost forgot to mention, Giannis's passing in this game was fantastic. Like, he has nine assists, and that tells you a lot. But also... A lot of those passes were not easy passes, and they were just the right play and not a play that anyone can make. And, like, Giannis has always been a pretty good passer. He passed like a great passer today, so credit to him for that. But can't keep it with this drop coverage against Trey Young, and you got to just get Brooke Lopez out of there. At least when Trey Young is on the floor, you can't, you can't, because they're just going to target him. You just can't do it. So, Stop messing around with Trey Young because, as he showed you in this game, if you don't take Trey Young seriously, he's going to drop 48 7 and 11 on good efficiency on your team in the conference finals. There's a whole conversation going on Twitter right now about how good Trey Young is and where he ranks in the NBA right now, but he is. But but regardless of that, uh, I don't know where I was going with that because it was just a little bit of an annoying conversation because we were like, is Trey Young a top 10 player in the NBA? No. But definitely give him his praise for this game because, my God, what a performance. 
At the same time, though, the Bucks could do so much better of a job defending him. So hopefully they figure that shit out. Ultimately, I still have the Bucks winning this series, but the Hawks have shown me that betting against them is not an easy bet to make, regardless of what team they see in front of them. Uh, hopefully the Bucks get their shit together. But yeah, that is it. Goodbye.